my mind hasn't been changed over the strikes because of the dates for choosing. Because um, last year for the FA Cup semi-final over the Easter weekend, there were no trains to London from Liverpool or Manchester anyway because of planned engineering work. And they didn't so, call uh, it off? No, no. So as, as Mick Lynch has said in response to the question of you know turning the public against them, that the travelling public can't rely on the rail services, mm. even when it's a non-strike day. So what you need to do is persuade people to care more about the targets that, that have been painted on the backs of people like Mick Lynch than to actually care about the rail service that they would argue yeah. they were trying to protect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this was routine maintenance on multiple locations up and down the West Coast main line last year. But it's and, been a um, nightmare they... for ages, hasn't it? That That coast in particular, that line in particular coming out of... Um, yeah. It's Houston, yeah, sure. is it? Well, it, it was it was out of um, Liverpool and Manchester down to down to Houston. Yeah. So there was no there was no trains there. So two teams from the northwest playing in London over and it the didn't Easter happen. weekend. So it's a bit of a pearl clutching exercise to to, to complain that this Absolutely. is sort of deliberately yeah. disruptive. I hear you. Facts versus feelings, though. That is what industrial action is almost always about. Um, a bit like Brexit, I suppose. Facts versus feeling. Here are the facts. For example, as Jason tells us. Um, it, 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 it couldn't have guaranteed a train service anyway at the best of times, even if there wasn't any industrial action. Feelings? Oh, I hate unions, I do, because the idea of workers having representation against bosses is uh, entirely alien to everything that I, I, a worker, believe in. Why is it more spiteful to disrupt football than it is to disrupt, for example, a journey to a hospital? The people who basically, in the health service... No, I'm asking you what life. your thoughts are. My thoughts on are why football every... is more important than healthcare. The, the, like I just said, they're not linked in any way. You may. How, how do I get to the hospital on a train if the train isn't running, Matt? You ring an ambulance, but they're all on strike, so you can't get one. No, so you, you don't. You don't ring an ambulance. You don't ring an ambulance for a scheduled appointment, Matt. Don't you, start it? lying, Matt. That doesn't help either of us. How do I get? to my hospital appointment, my scheduled hospital appointment in a non-emergency scenario on a train if the trains aren't running. You ring an ambulance or you get a lift. No, you don't. And like I well, said, the you two can do that the to the football. Totally separate Why can't you get a lift to the football? The clubs themselves will probably put coaches on to circumnavigate. So the football is going to be disrupted Lynch. less. It's going to be disrupted less than the healthcare. I'm not bothered whether the football's affected at all. I'm bothered that Mick Lynch is a con man and he's a media opportunist and people like you defend him. I'm not defending him. I'm just asking you really simple questions that you can't answer. I answered them. No, I'm healthcare, sorry, that you can't answer sensibly or substantively. And train companies are not the same thing. OK, Matt. One does have you got one a ticket? For, thing. Have you got a ticket for the game? No, I don't go to London. I don't like it because of people like you. <laughs> I think she's trying to explain something, but it did come out the wrong way. Okay. 90% of her letter is not bad, but there is a little bit. She's not. What she's trying to say, which doesn't work in the UK because the legislation sees these kind of things as racism, she would have said it in my own country or somewhere else. She wouldn't have been treated as racist because racism has the word race in it. Jewish, are, the, the, the Judaism is a religion. Jewish has nothing to do with race. Do you understand what oh, I'm saying? It's I not a race. Oh, you're so wrong. I don't understand how you are in a position to not understand this. No, no, hold on. I'm explaining to you how, why a lot of people are going to see it different and will be able to line up with her. I'm telling you, in I, my own country, I, I understand Jewish you are think... not classed as a race. No, race you're wrong. Is black. You are... You are... Hold you on. are wrong in law and you are wrong in fact. There is, if I honestly, it boggles law, my mind law, that you're wrong. in this position. In law, I am wrong because, I, especially if I'm in the United Kingdom, I am totally wrong. So it is seen as racist, but is there an abort? Then that's what I'm trying to say. Going to Oxbridge doesn't mean she can understand it. Does Diana Abbott understand whether what she said is actually racism? I don't think so. She sees them going, being subject to hatred. An unacceptable and unacceptable level of racism. And that's why I agree with the man who said, bring Diana Abbott on the show. I think all of you need to bring her to well, understand Well, Aisha, we have asked, but we can't, we can't drag her in here. We've asked if no, no, Diana Abbott would like to come say, on, and what I'm trying we haven't to say, heard. What, does she have the same understanding 
than the law in this country understands. It's not because she's been to Cambridge, she will understand that. No. We need to be very careful Some whether she does. People and she's met talking about Cambridge. hatred. She is, she is not undermining the Holocaust or anything. She, she is not undermining that, but she explained things. It came out wrong. These are things you say in the house. But I should, do you understand? Oh, good. Things that you say in the house. Oh, good. So we've had an insight into Diana. No, no, it's mine that she say, wouldn't mention inside, it in public. Inside, discuss it. But, but don't, you know, people debate it, disagree with it. But a public figure in the United Kingdom, especially how the law is designed here, should not and must not go and write things like that. Do you think I should just finally... It, it just, was a draft. I should, and I, no. I believe it was a draft. <laughs> it's not something she wanted to, to come out. I, I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm eagerly waiting for the results of the investigation. And I do not agree with Mr. Keir Starmer. Uh, I think right. he has been... Uh, but you, sorry, just just to, to be really clear, Aisha, you, you understand. Answer. Hang on, no, 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 it's my turn. You understand the difference between uh, someone being Jewish and someone believing in following the practices and tenets of Judaism. Judaism. You understand? Yes, that? I do because yes, because somebody might not be of of the Jewish uh, uh, Jewish. Um, uh, you say race now, but we would have said ethnicity, race, but can follow Judaism. I can wake up one morning. I'm, I'm, I'm Muslim and I can convert to Judaism or I can yep. convert to Christianity. So that I would, understand that. Converting to I Judaism would hang on a sec. I should, converting to Judaism would not make you Jewish. No. 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 Good. Right. Okay. So we're there. We. I think we agree. Um, so to say that the Jewish people are not a race, even by your own definition and in the the laws of this country, is it, just wrong. Completely wrong. I believe that the the start of this sort of voter ID. Thing is, is a, a sort of stealth way for the the Tories to bring in um, their own sort of agenda when it comes to voting. I, I think they're trying to sort of bring in some kind of voter suppression. If you look at the people who are going to be able to register for their their photo ID, you know you're you know people that are a little bit older, a little bit more responsible. I think they're taking a lot of younger voters off the board. But I think here's the to thing: I, the way. I, I hear what you say, and you're not alone in that, sir. But if any group are going to be pretty swift at getting online, getting a card sent to them, I would argue it's probably more likely to be younger folk than it is older folk who will know how to do that. They'll master it far quicker than perhaps some older folk, David. Is that fair? I, I, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that point. Um, but I think that the younger generation are less motivated to vote. Ah, yeah. So I, I think it's if you're putting barriers in their way... It's just another way for them to say, oh, you know no, what, that's fine, right. I'll not bother. So um, when I spoke to the bloke from the Electoral Commission, if you were listening earlier, he said, oh, well, we conduct these surveys and people tell us they have great concerns about potential fraud in our voting booth. Has anybody ever asked you as you've left a never, vote? No. Never, no. never. I, I, I mean, if, if they want to implement it, they'll find an excuse. Um, I don't think there's ever been any sort of evidence of widespread fraud in our elections. Not enough to change any single race. So I, I think it is genuinely a way for the Tories to look at how they're losing ground. How can they hold on to, to what power is left and um, and bring in ways to make it more difficult for those that may vote for other parties to do so? Well, it does support the idea, and it was the campaign group that came up with this uh, sentence, that it's a solution, look, a solution in search of a problem. Is the Home Secretary speaking for the British people when she says that illegal migrants don't share our values and are often criminals, or is she shaming our nation by using this kind of rhetoric? Which is the exact question we're going to be asking listeners at nine o'clock for the whole hour. So well done for anticipating that, Scott. Um, Jackie Smith has just joined us. Just for your benefit, Jackie, the question is, is the Home Secretary speaking for the British people when she says illegal migrants don't have the same values as us and are often criminals? Or is she shaming our nation by using that rhetoric? Uh, Jonathan Gullis. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with the mentioning of the values. Uh, I don't think that was appropriate, nor was it right. I think the Home Secretary does have a point around the criminality, and if I explain what I mean by that, it is perfectly plausible and reasonable to suggest that people who are coming from Albania, who uh, you know can get a flight for £28, but are choosing to spend 4500 to be smuggled illegally into the United Kingdom, uh, are effectively coming to avoid checks at the border, to avoid having to present themselves to our border force. And we, it is very clear that the Vietnamese cannabis gangs that were once very prevalent across this country have been taken over by Albanian 
gang. So I think it's perfectly right to say that there is a coarse criminality within this. We know that the people have entered the country, sadly, who have been linked with terrorism uh, in other parts of the country, uh, sorry, the world as, uh, as well. So ultimately, I think that there is a point to be made, but I don't think that the values and the broad stroke uh, that was brushed to everyone was right or reasonable. 